So the first thing you're going to want to do is just delete everything in your scene. And then I'm just going to jump up to our preferences to make sure that we have the correct add-ons enabled. I'm going to search for Node Wrangler and make sure that that's checked. Once we have that add-on checked, we can add in a plane. There we go. And we're just going to use this plane as a base for our material and we can apply this material to other objects later. So I'm just jumping into the shading menu now and I'm just going to give this a material, hit new and give it a name. I'm going to name it hologram. We don't need this principle BSDF, so I'm just going to delete it. The first node that I'm going to add is a texture coordinates node. This node just allows you to view different color data on top of the object. And I'm just using control shift click to jump between these. The one that we're going to want to focus on for this tutorial is UV. And it just gives us this green, red, yellow gradient here. So just to show the kind of thing that we're going to be doing, I'm going to add a gradient texture. You don't have to do this. And I'm going to change it over to spherical. And what this is going to give us is just a quarter circle that we're going to be able to turn into a full circle later. And you can control the size of this using a color ramp node. So I'm just going to delete those two and we're going to start from scratch here. So I'm going to add a separate XYZ node. And this just allows me to see each of those gradients individually. So you can see Z has nothing in it, where X has a gradient going from left to right, and Y has a gradient going from bottom to top. So let's add a math node into here. And I'm just going to change the function of this math node over to modulo. I think that's how you pronounce it. And you can see me here just going over, changing that over to modulo. And you can see what this has given us. It's doubled up our gradient from left to right. So I'm just going to duplicate that and plug that into the Y. So now we have gradients going top to bottom doubled up and left to right doubled up. Now we're going to want to combine these back together. So I'm just going to add a combine XYZ node. And I'm just going to plug the X into the top and the Y into the bottom, leaving the Z blank. And you can see now that we have sort of a uh, quadrupled gradient going on here. So now we can jump back in and do what we did again in the start. I'm going to add them back in my gradient texture and change it over to spherical and add in a color ramp node and drag it across until we get sort of four quarter circles. But we don't want quarter circles, we want full circles. So I'm going to add in a vector math node, plug that in between those two. And I'm going to change this over to subtract. And I don't want to have to change all three values at the same time. So I'm just going to add in a value node and plug that into the bottom one. So it's going to affect all three. And I'm just going to move this around and you'll see that the circle will now become fully clear. And you want a value of 2.5 to get that directly in the middle. And you can see now I can adjust our gradient and we have four circles sitting here. I'm going to change over my color ramp to constant. Drag that over, so now you can see we've got more defined circles here. Now that we've made our circles, we can add in a mapping node between the first two. And what the mapping node is going to allow us to do is just increase the number of circles. So just plugging in a value here to that bottom one to scale. And now I can make this value whatever I like and increase or decrease the number of circles. I can also affect the color of the circles by just changing the color on the color ramp. I'm just going to select blue. Now we can get on with creating the end of the shader here. So I'm just going to add an emission shader and plug that in. It's going to go purple because it's plugged into the viewer node. And if you plug that into surface, you're going to see that come up. Set the strength to something like five. And I'm also going to add in a transparent BSDF and then a mix shader node. And I'm gonna plug in the emission to the top. And I'm gonna plug the transparent into the bottom. But we need to tell it where it needs to be transparent. So I'm gonna add in a new math node and plug that into our color ramp, making sure it's set to multiply. And I'm just gonna multiply it by a number until we get a nice alpha here, something so we can make it go completely white and just plug that into the factor. And you'll see if we plug that into surface now, that we're not gonna be able to see anything. And that's because our alpha is inverted. 
easy fix. We're just going to add an invert node and plug that between the math node and the mix shader. Still one last step before we can see the alpha. You're going to jump into the material settings, go into settings and then go to blend mode and change it to alpha clip. And now we have a transparent alpha with our circles. So that's looking pretty awesome. So if you want to change the size of the circles, just affect the color ramp. And if you want to change the amount of circles, just affect the value on the mapping node. So now we have a procedural texture. I'm going to add in Suzanne here to give an example of how you can use this. So we've got Suzanne and I'm going to apply the hologram material. Now, clearly we have too few circles for this, but that's an easy fix. I'm just going to jump in and put that to a higher value. And I can also affect the size of the circles. You could use this value to animate the circles in if you wanted to. Um, you can do several different things with that. You can animate the color. You can see here I'm enabling bloom to kind of give it a bit more of a sort of ethereal look. So the last thing I'm going to do to this is I like to add in a wireframe node. Now wireframe just gives you an alpha of the wireframe of the model. You can see down the plane has very few polys, but Suzanne has a few more. And if I add in a color ramp node, change it over to constant and drag that to somewhere about the middle, I can then uh, affect the color. Just drag in the color over from our other color ramp. And so it's exactly the same. And now I'm just going to add in a mix shader node because we want to mix these two together. I'm going to add in an emission material and just put that in between the ramp. Got our mix shader node and I'm just going to plug in our old shader into the bottom and our wireframe shader into the top. And then I'm going to plug in to our factor, the original wireframe node as an alpha. It looks a bit janky, but again, our alpha is inverted. So I'm just going to add in an invert node and put that between those two. And you can see that our blue is looking a little bit dull in comparison to the dots, but that's just because we need to set our emission to something like five. So now you have a procedural hologram texture. You can affect the amount of dots. You can make them animate in. You can change the color of them. You can animate several properties. You can turn this into a, sort of a custom shader if you wanted with a few sliders. You can see here, I'm just adjusting the amount of circles, making way more of them, then adjusting their size. And if we jump into the layout view, we'll be able to more clearly see this. There we go. So you can apply this to any object as long as it has UVs. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. It was a little bit of a strange one. I'm new to the world of procedural materials, but I thought that this was an interesting use case. And maybe if you are new to procedural materials as well, it will give you a little bit more insight into how they're built. And hopefully I can make some similar things to this in the future. So I'll see you guys next time and thanks for watching.